Well, you've turned to the page of the book. This is the only picture we're going to look at on that page. And what do we see here? We see red blood cells. Red blood cells affected by a certain genetic challenge. What's the name of this genetic situation? It's called what? Sickle cell anemia. Which ones are the normal red uh, looking red blood cells? Uh, these ones that sort of look like jelly donuts are normal. Uh, these that are sickle shaped like a kind of a cutting instrument they used to cut the hay fields with and so forth. That's not good. And uh, so that's caused by the mutation we talked about, the base substitution mutation. And, uh, um, and besides uh, having a funny shape, these uh, sickle-shaped uh, red blood cells, they stick together. They kind of form clogs. And uh, what do you mean clogs? Well, our red blood cells are moving around our circulatory system. And uh, they go through some big pipes called uh, arteries and veins. But they go through some smaller pipes. And the very smallest pipe in the pipeline is uh, what type of uh, blood vessel? It's called a capillary. And how many red blood cells can get through a capillary side by side? Not just one. They go through a single file. Uh, back when I was teaching ninth grade, I had a fish tank in the corner of the room. I had the fish. I had a bunch of goldfish in there. And when we got to this, uh, this particular topic, I had a little thing set up. The students had microscopes, microscope slides. They had little cotton uh, actually cotton blankets, uh, so to speak, and they'd, when they'd get them nice and wet, they'd uh, pull a fish out with a little net, put it in the cotton blanket, kind of like a little sandwich with its little head sticking out one end, its tail sticking out the other, put them under a micros on a microscope slide, spread that tail out, which is real wet, on the uh, microscope slide, and study the flow of blood, uh, uh, blood cells through the tail, which is only, it's very, very thin, so you can see the you can see the, the, the vessels, and uh, you can actually see the red blood cells uh, moving through the capillaries, and they had to go through single file. So what does it do when uh, the cells are not only sickle-shaped, they're stuck together in a huge wads? That just clogs the whole system up. It's a very bad situation. Uh, when I was uh, uh, young, <laughs> many years ago, I had a young friend who was also young, and... Uh, uh, like me, and uh, he would get these attacks of sickle cell anemia, and they put him in bed uh, for several days till the attack sort of passed. And um, and so, uh, what is the protein affected by this this particular uh, uh, mutation, this base substitution mutation? Well, we talked about it earlier. It's the uh, it's a very uh, complex protein. It's got quaternary structure. Uh, it's the one that's in red blood cells, carries oxygen from our lungs around our, our system, starts with H. What is that again? Hemoglobin, a huge protein that's got uh, one amino acid messed up, and that causes this thing called sickle cell anemia. Does every amino acid count? Is one little amino mess, a messed up amino acid, is that, is, that, is that important? Well, just ask anybody with sickle cell anemia. And uh, I have a friend in Norman, an acquaintance. I don't see him too much. Uh, a good acquaintance. I see him from time to time. And uh, he uh, played uh, football for OU and played uh, professional football. But he has sickle cell anemia. And he finally had to have a premature retirement from professional football. Because I guess he couldn't get the sickle cell anemia or keep it under control. Um, now, sickle cell anemia affects one particular race. Uh, in much higher frequency than others. What is the group of individuals that uh, the racial group that is most heavily affected by this mutation? Yeah, it's African Americans. And why so? Well, the mutation occurred up the uh, up the family tree to someone's germline cell way back when uh, uh, that, that was a person who lived in Africa, and uh, and so. Uh, it has been passed on to many African Americans uh, and Africans, obviously, uh, since that time. And, uh, and so, uh, it's not exclusively African American anymore, but it's primarily an African American uh, genetic uh, disease. 
And so my young friend, when I was young, was African American, the one that had sickle cell anemia. And my friend in Norman, who played football for OU, is also an African American. So, uh, through nobody's fault, nobody's fault, mutation occurred hundreds of years ago to someone, someone's germline cell and has been passed down generation by generation to many offspring. Of course, it's a recessive genetic disease. And so you have to inherit the two recessive alleles. You have the dominant allele, it can be covered up. Uh, so anyone with sickle cell anemia inherited the two recessive alleles from their heterozygous parents, uh, if their parents didn't have sickle cell anemia. If their parents were just carriers. So, bottom line, does one little measly amino acid make a difference in the function of a protein? I guess so. Again, ask anybody with sickle cell anemia. All right, that's it for this one.